Hello, so today we have a fun one. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, Elise Hero Augment. So I feel like in set 12, so th this is set 12 PVE. So mind you, if you're seeing this video a little bit later or if you're watching it right now, set 12 isn't released yet. So there's a lot of changes every day. There's basically a new patch notes of changes. Uh, the point of PVE is to experiment, try the new stuff, see what's strong, see what's weak, see what needs to get fixed before the set actually releases. Um, so this is before the set releases. I'm trying out a bunch of stuff. I'm playing a lot of games because I want to get the best head start. Um, if you want to check out my content, you want to see these videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And the idea behind this is that we are just trying our best to learn about the units ahead of the set so that we have the best start going into the set and we're kind of just, you know, hedging our excitement for new units and all of that stuff. Uh, but basically, there's a lot of new hero augments. Uh, in general, there's a lot of augments added. They basically added, I think, like 100 augments or something. A big change to this set is that they made all these big augments so i think there's a lot of diverse paths but it's going to be like a very knowledge check type of thing if you know how to execute with certain really strong augments you can make it work now elise is part of the shapeshifters uh we're going to go over this all in uh all in this video i'm going to explain everything that i know about uh, the units and how i think the build should go and uh, we'll see how it works out obviously everything's subject to change with nerfs and buffs but i don't think it's going to be too far off of whatever is already in the pve uh, but anyways, so I'm starting off, I'm just gathering some frost units. Frost units, it's whatever, it's a trait that we're not really going to care too much about. Uh, but as you can see on the uh, corner of the screen, right, oops, sorry, screen went black, right there, that's Elise. So I already have one Elise, so I'm kind of thinking to myself, maybe I can play towards Elise, and let's see. So um, this is a new augment, Pilfer, kind of think if I should reroll, clear mine, we already know, you have my sword, we already know those are classics. Learning to spell is pretty interesting. Uh, Spider Queen. So you gain a two-star Elise. Your strongest Elise no longer stuns, uh, but she poisons and does damage, right? Uh, her spell costs 20, uh, 20 mana less, and she basically does... Uh, she basically poisons two closest enemies and does a 30, 130 magic damage to them. So we start with Elise. So we get an Elise 2 for free. So that's really great. Um, and we're just going to try and play it. So we're going to play like reroll. So Elise has two traits to her. Uh, she is Eldritch, as you can see on the left-hand side, and she is Shapeshifter. Shapeshifter, if you do not know what it is, it is basically like Bruiser in previous sets. It's the HP defensive trait. Whenever you have a defensive trait in the set, there's always three different defensive traits. There's always going to be one that scales your HP, one that makes you take less damage, and one that gives you armor and, and magic reduction, right? or armor and MR, right? Um, in this case, she is basically like a Bruiser, right? Uh, if you read her item or description, hopefully I can point it out if I hover over it. This is a VOD review, so I'm doing the commentary in post. Uh, but hopefully we can see the extra units. Here I'm trying to cook up a comp. Whenever you play a hero augment, typically you're trying to build towards the traits that the hero has. Um, right? So in this case, Elise being Shapeshifter and Eldritch. Eldritch is like a reroll, void, uh, Kale, like one of the summon comps, right? If you have three Eldritch, you get an Eldritch Beast, which jumps in and stuns the board. And that Eldritch Beast scales with star levels, right? So if you get all three stars of all the Eldritch units, you'll be really, really strong with all of these Eldritch, uh, with all of, with the Eldritch Beasts particularly. Uh, I decide that I'm probably going to play Vertical Shapeshifter here because Elise scales off her HP and she's going to be doing most of the damage on the board for much of the time, right? So her ability damage and mana, uh, basically because she's doing like AoE damage. I want her to be similar to like, if you think about it, you can treat Elise if you played set 11. Like, I know my YouTube channel is kind of more recent, so I'm trying to make some connections here. If you played set 11 and you read her description, as you can see, she deals magic damage, which scales off her HP as well as her AP. So her damage scales off her HP. Uh, she restores health based on her AP. And she does extra damage to two closest allies now, instead of uh, two closest enemies instead of stunning, right? Uh, this guy has an Eldritch Emblem. So I feel like he's already going to be playing like Eldritch or Eldritch Reroll. So I'm going to play mostly Shapeshifters. Elise scales off her HP or damage. Having more Shapeshifter in is like Bruiser. If you have 6 Shapeshifter in, um, you get uh, more percentage uh, buff to HP. So you get like a bunch more HP, which will scale the amount of damage that she does. Because she's hitting multiple units at once, I'm baking a Spark on her, right? It's good to just reduce the magic resist to make sure that she does as much damage as possible. Uh, this is uh, like a galaxy where we get this trainer sentinel with the unstable treasure chest. So that's normal as usual. Uh, I put in Eldritch because it's good early. Uh, and I'm going to try and play towards six shapeshifter, right? I should probably hold on to the Shivana. She's a shapeshifter, as you can see here. 
but this is basically what I'm cooking up, right? Uh, it's one of my first times playing this. I'm trying to look for the different units. I'm putting Eldritch units in my team planner, and I'm also going to put in Shapeshifters. I'm just trying to, like, plan around uh, playing around these units because those are the units that you want to play with the least. In terms of, like, the actual build for the unit, we don't know what's perfectly optimal, right? We can only predict uh, based on, like, you know, using our own intuition as well as, um, like, you know, later on, depending on buffs and nerfs, uh, the build might change, right? When you see a unit that scales off HP and uh, magic, it's similar to like Silas in set 11. Uh, it's Silas in set 11, he was bruiser and he did a bunch of AP damage. The optimal build for Silas wasn't to build him with like Titans, Bloodthirster, like a melee unit. It wasn't to build him with like Rabadons only in certain situations and like big AP items. A lot of times you just made uh, magic tank items, right? There's items like Crown Guard, right? Crown Guard. Um, gives a lot of AP as well as is a defensive item. Uh, things like Adaptive Helm. Adaptive Helm was always very good on Silas because it gives a lot of defensive stats, but it also gives um, a lot of AP. Uh, items like that are probably what's going to be best on this unit, so that's what I want to build towards, right? If I can, I, if I can give my ideal build, my ideal build would be something like um, like Spark because you just want the Spark to be alive as much as possible. Uh, probably like Crown Guard. Uh, and then, uh, what's it called? Like, adaptive. Right? Like, these three items are probably going to be good. Some interchange of all of these. Uh, because she is a bruiser, uh, Dragon Claw is also probably really good. Right? Uh, Dragon Claw slash Redemption. So, Dragon Claw and Redemption, they both heal based off maximum percentage HP. Right? Um, when you have a Dragon Claw or Redemption, it'll heal based off their, um, total amount of HP and because our HP is going to scale really high because of Shapeshifter which is basically Bruiser you can think of it as Bruiser if you're not used to the words DFT likes to do this thing the devs where they try and make the the more topical uh the names and stuff but it's essentially Bruiser she's just going to scale up her HP a lot right um if you're dealing with that type of situation right um, having a declaw redemption because it's it heals a percentage of your maximum HP. You're gonna heal more usually with those items on a tank than you will with um, like a bloodthirst or a hodge or like a, an omni vamp item, right? Um, it's just because of the way that the scaling works, right? It also works really nicely because it's a defensive, um, a defensive item and you want defensive items on the unit, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if that becomes meta if it's like you just build like. Spark, Declaw, Crown Guard. Like, that can be a very easily broken build for Elise. In general, I think Shapeshifters, almost all the Shapeshifters are very strong. I think Shapeshifter is a really, really strong trait so far. We'll see if there's any adjustments or any changes when it goes into live. But it's it's just, it's just, it's just great, right? Elise, even without the Hero Aukman, I swear she's unkillable. Like, I know Elise, like, I don't know League lore, lore heads, get in, get in here. Uh, like, she is so hard to kill. I wouldn't be surprised if her great-grandfather was, like, part cockroach. You know what I mean? Like, she is really good as a tank. Like, <laughs> at least so far in PvE. Like, she is one of those units where you get an upgraded Elise early. It's like, okay, now I'm in a good spot, stage 2. Right? And this gave me a Elise 2 for free. Uh, I don't expect to lose any fights here. Like, this guy looks very strong, by the way. Um, and the reason he's so strong... Um, I might lose this fight, but this guy's gonna be a problem later. Um, possibly. This augment, I don't, I forget what it's called, but this augment, uh, does true damage based on your percentage HP. It's like you take 5% HP damage, and I'm playing vertical HP units. It's actually really, like, it's like a counter augment to what I'm trying to build, so that might be a problem later, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, I'm in a decent spot. I only found two Elise. It's not that great. Uh, Nashers is what I'm debating making here. Um, I don't have good item for what I want to make, right? I want a lot of rod items. Like I said, I want like crown guard, adaptive helm. But I want to make items nonetheless. Uh, the biggest problem with hero augments is that if you don't have early items on the unit and you don't hit the unit like as a three star very early, you run into a very peculiar situation where it's like, well, like now what do I do, right? And uh, what happens is if you start losing a bunch of fights, then it kind of mitigates the hero augment, right? When if you're playing like a low cost reroll, uh, and a lot of the hero augments are low cost rerolls. You want to hit as early as possible, right? If you don't hit very early, then you're just going to run into a problem. Now here, uh, this is just because I'm a little bit dizzy. 
Uh, I'm kind of holding on to more Eldritch Runes and Shapeshifters. You'll see later I kind of switch to play more Shapeshifters. I should be rolling for Jace. Jace is another is another one cost Shapeshifter. I think if you're playing this comp, like me, I was trying to think. I was thinking more that I was gonna play like Syndra carry. Um, like Sin I was gonna play like Syndra Ash, and then if I have Syndra three, I was gonna play around like Encanter backline and maybe play like five Eldritch four Shapeshifter, like something like that. Uh, because you can easily fit in uh six Shapeshifter with Eldritch with five Eldritch because both shape like um, what's it called Elise as well as the five cost. Eldritch unit, which is Briar, are both shapeshifters. So they align really well if you can make it like you hit all the units and you level. So I think that was my original goal here. I'm saying that I think with this hero augment, you're better off just playing towards vertical shapeshifter. And in that case, you probably just roll for Ash and um what's his name? And Jace. Because if you if you collect a bunch of Jaces, uh when you're rolling and you collect a bunch of the same cost unit, it thins out the pool and makes it easier to hit the other ones. So when you're rolling, you always want to be rolling whenever you press like the D button on your keyboard or whenever you click the re-roll button. You always want to be re-rolling for multiple units. Here I take Portable Forge. I'm down for any like Giga item. Uh, I don't think Elise makes a shield. So Forbidden Idol does isn't going to be broken tech. That's usually when they have a shield. So I read it, I double check, she doesn't have a shield. I take trench coat, right? I'm imagining that, hey, maybe she's like Silas, right? You make a trench coat. Remember Silas with trench coat? That was really busted. And that's the way you should always think about new sets, right? Uh, whenever you think about new sets or playing TFT and it's like you don't know the units, try and compartmentalize them. Try and make them similar to other units that you've seen, right? Even though all the units are new, it's a little bit... It, it makes more sense if you, like, um, treat them like previous units that you've seen. So, I'm, a, I'm, I'm expecting Trenchdale to be really good. She does AoE damage to two units as well with the hero augment. So, yeah. Uh, also, if you're an arachnophobe, please click out of this video now because things like yeah we're, we're, we're going full we're going full force with this one we have three elise now uh they're all ticking down venom right so the en enemy is like damage over time that's what this uh dot if you guys are like i don't know mobas mobas use that term a lot um but it's damage over time aoe that she does basically right i say aoe but it's, i think it strikes only two units so, trench coat seems really good because I can basically strike more than two units, right? I can just poison a bunch of units. They all start ticking down their uh, their health. And then if I play vertical shapeshifter, um, my front line's going to be very strong, lives a lot of time, right? If they live for a very long period of time, then um, I keep doing this damage over time. Uh, as long as the fight lasts long enough, everybody's going to be dead. That's the idea, right? So, we have our build path, we have our idea. And that's what I, uh, that's why I'm kind of going to do this game. I'm going to sit for a while. Uh, I'm still just playing two Shapeshifter. I'm, I'm just playing this like three Eldritch because I think the Eldritch Beast is pretty good. And with the Elise three, my front line's pretty set. It's pretty strong. I did find a lot of Syndras, right? I already found six Syndras. Um, so I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably trying to dual carry Syndra. That's why I'm playing, uh, this unit with Witchcraft, right? I'm playing uh, Nico, which is a Witchcraft Shapeshifter, which gives like a little bit of like an added effect of extra damage. And uh, I'm playing Cassiopeia because she's an Encanter, which helps out my Syndra. Encanters gain AP over time. Similar to like Arcan, uh, like kind of, kind of like Arcanus, I guess. But yeah. I don't really expect to lose much in this game. Uh, like I said, there's two. There's one problem guy that I point out so far, the guy that does percentage HP damage. Because that guy might be a problem a lot later. We'll see later that there is another really strong player in the lobby that ends up happening. But of course, you know, it is what it is. We don't really worry too much about that. Also, I think my, my, my uh, OBS settings kind of reset recently. I think my, my dog doesn't talk properly with when my voice is actually speaking. So I got to fix that a little bit. So hopefully... Uh, that should be fixed for next video, hopefully, but we'll see. Alright, so I'm level 5 here. I could just level for something else. But like I said, I didn't really roll for any other 3 stars. I can probably, I, I'm probably, I'm more thinking that I should just tempo, right? Because if I make it to like level 9, I can fit in a really nasty board. Because hitting a Briar would be pretty big. Uh, especially when you have a lot of HP. Because the way Briar works is that you can feed Briar to increase her stats that make her stronger that makes her stronger so i'm kind of down to uh just level and play towards briar instead of playing towards the units that i'm currently playing towards uh but like i said elise is so strong already so i think with the hero augment it's like overkill 
I'm not sure if she already got nerfed or how she's gonna be nerfed going into the main game. Uh, but she did like I, I feel like I feel this about most of the hero augments. The only one that I, I really struggled with was Rumble Hero Augment so far. But I've played all the hero augments and they all feel very similar to like last set's hero augments, where they're all like broken. They're all like very strong. If you hit them and you have a good spot for it, right? Um, and good spot is like quote unquote good spot, right? It's like so long as the spot is like decent enough that you can play the unit and you have like some sort of slammable item for the unit early game, uh, you're you're an you're an insane spot. Uh, I'm just hundred streaking here, right? And yeah, we're just chilling. My items aren't optimal. I really don't think Nasher's Tooth is the right item. I would like to change it eventually. There are a lot of options to change items. I feel like almost every game that I play, especially if you're re-rolling, uh, there's these charms here, right? So charms basically uh, is the set mechanic of this game. Uh, they take up one slot, uh, shop spot, and it happens every three shops, right? So every three shops, you gain a charm in your thing, and then you can spend gold to buy it. For example, this one's zero gold. You and your opponent gain one gold. I don't really need one gold, and I'm ahead of everybody else, so I don't really care about giving somebody else gold, right? Which is why I'm not playing that. Um, uh, which is why I'm not taking this charm even though it's free. Uh, but buying charms, there's a lot, there, I feel like, especially if you're like re-rolling units, it's very strong because there's some charms that are just like really broken and there's some that are pretty good. Oh, I ended up taking it anyways. Yeah, I just said one gold is one gold. I don't care if this guy gets a gold because I figured like whatever. Uh, but anyways, when you buy charms, there's one of them or there's a couple of them that show up pretty often, which is like gain a magnetic remover. So I feel like that incentivizes me a lot this set to slam items even if they're not super optimal because I feel like you can just get a remover pretty easily, right? Especially if you reroll, right? Especially like for me, like that I'm tempoing, uh, I feel like it's really good to just have um, have the items on the Elise, right? Anyways, hopefully everybody's having a great day. I know it was a little bit of an info dump. Uh, I recently had a really good hero augment video, so I felt like that was pretty good. Um, so I wanted to do all the hero augments. I've been, basically been grinding out to do those. Uh, here I got like double Orn Artifact. Uh, none of these are particularly amazing for Elise. Uh, I, I know an uh, Innervating Locket might be strong on somebody. I'm not sure. Um, it's just like each cast was towards 20% of the max health over 3 seconds. So I figured like I don't know if that's good on Elise or not. It might be. But I'm just taking it because I can put on another bruiser, right? I'm trying to think like, okay, what can I put on Briar, right? So that's why I take uh, those those particular artifacts. I put them on, uh, what's her name, Nico for now. So I'm basically using Nico to hold Briar items. I'm not sure if Innervating Locket is super good on um, Elise. Like, it sounds like it's really good, but the thing is, Elise, I don't think needs that much mana. And that item deals a lot with, like, mana and casting, right? Um, I think that once she does her damage over time, I don't think the damage over time stacks. I might be wrong about that, but that was my thought process. So I wasn't really considering to put it on her. It might be broken on her. Maybe like trench coat, spark, and then lock it is like the way to go. Uh, but in my head, I was thinking like, okay, if you're recovering 20% of your max HP, my Elise is kind of tanky enough and doing fine. I might as well put that on like a different bruiser and it will be like equally as strong. Uh, here, I don't, I, I think it was probably Blossom Gold uh, thing. I took Tiny But Deadly, right? Um, I think it was the, uh, the Blossom, Blossoming, uh, Lotus is similar to, like, Jeweled Lotus. It basically, like, deals with crit chance. I think I should have taken the crit chance. I think if my team had, like, more damage, I don't think I need attack speed, right? Like, Tiny But Deadly is, like, whatever, but I, I don't, I don't think I needed more attack speed. Um, it's usually really strong to have, like, movement speed and attack speed. So I just took it in general to be like strong, but I don't know if it's like particularly great. Uh, here I'm rolling for uh, Nico 2, and then I wanted to put in, yeah, there we go. So I upgrade Nico, and then I put in one more shapeshifter, now I'm 4 shapeshifter. And this is what I was saying, right? Like you can easily play around 3 Eldritch, and then you can play towards 6 shapeshifter pretty easily, right? And then also you can play like 5 Eldritch pretty easily. Like you can play like 6 shapeshifter, 5 Eldritch, because if I level to level 9, I can fit in 5 Eldritch, 6 Shapeshifter, I'm pretty sure. I just have to lose like 1 or 2 units, right? Like it fits on the board. Uh, and that's just because uh, there's 2 Shapeshifters within the Eldritch trait. There is the Elise and then there's also the uh, Briar. 
Also, I want to say I'm gonna update my my sub goal. So I think we're at 547. Oh wait, no, I can't update that sub goal. That, that's in the actual video. Uh, my sub goal now is a thousand YouTube subs. Please help me to get to a thousand YouTube subs, uh, because that's like the next big milestone for YouTube. If you don't know YouTube, like the big milestone is a thousand subs. So I really wanted to reach it. Hopefully by the end of set 12, we can reach a thousand YouTube subs. Uh, hopefully people enjoy my content. I try my best to do daily uploads. Now I'm doing like multiple uploads per day when I can. Uh, just because PB changes so much, I don't want to have all these like dead VODs once the set comes out. Um, I'd rather just post everything and let you guys know what's up. And then we can figure it out. Uh, here we're, we're playing against Lilia Hero Augment. I don't think this guy's build his strength is really strong. I played Lilia Hero before. I don't think you build like Shoujin JG. I don't really think that you're trying to build like to like I I feel like it's never frontline Shoujin. If you don't know, units gain mana when they get attacked, right? So a lot of times you don't need a mana item on a frontline unit unless their mana is like very very far away, or it's like it's really important that they get like one or two casts off. If you have a unit that's already casting a bunch, which Lilia does cast quite frequently, I don't think Shoujin really helps her that much as much as like having more defensive stats or having more AP, right? So that's why I don't really consider it, but maybe I'm wrong. I might be completely like, you know, maybe that is the meta build and it's just not realized yet. Uh, here I just take glove because I can make a thieves gloves and I can just put on another frontline unit, which is pretty cool. Um, here I can lose the encounter and I can just play 5 Eldritch. This is what I was saying before, that's pretty easy to fit in. And I think it's probably a little bit better than encounter. I basically found all these Syndras really early on. Also, did I sell my Syndras? Didn't I have like 6 more Syndras? I think I sold them by accident. When did I sell them? Here? What happened to my Syndra? Look at this Syndra here. What happened? I want to redo this. I want a repeat of this round. Oh, I did polymorph and it took my Syndra. Okay, I just didn't understand how this uh, how this worked. That's my bad. Okay, okay, that's what happened this game. I was so confused. I was like, why didn't why don't I have Syndras anymore? I think I, I think I misunderstood what like with polymorph it changes the cost. I thought it changed the star level. So I was just really okay. Now I understand. Okay, okay. So that kind of griefed my game because Syndra was supposed to be my dual carry. Right, a lot of times, like, uh, eventually you fall off, right? Like, a lot of times you have to decide on a dual carry whenever you're going for a hero augment. Because late game, uh, you can't 1v9 everybody. At one point, you're going to get outcapped. Like, unless the unless the trade is broken, a lot of times you have to itemize somebody else, right? Uh, having a Syndra 3, even though it might not be the best damage, I feel like Syndra doesn't do that much in general in the set right now. I don't know if she's going to get fixed um, or get, like, super broken at one point. But she feels really bad in playing around her in PvE. But I could easily have uh, uh, had a Syndra 3, which is just... It's it's still damage, right? It's still good. And... Um, but now I think I think I just get stuck without the Syndra. And I just keep my items on Syndra. And that kind of hurts me a lot late game. Right? This game, I don't want to spoil it, but it's not going to be a first. Right? Um, but uh, that's mostly because of me not knowing exactly what I'm doing and not playing it perfectly well. Also, didn't I have two thieves gloves? What did I do? I'm so confused. Like, my item... Uh, oh, yeah, this is just the same round. Okay, okay, okay. We're back, we're back. Right? So, we go here. We grab Carousel. I'm playing against this guy. Um, the thing that's really funny that I feel really bad about whenever I'm playing this is, like, I have this trench coat, and it's, like... They're like barely, like they're barely even dealing with the Elise at all, right? As you can see, it's like, I still have two Elises left, right? By the time the round ends. So it works. I think Trenchcoat is really good on the Elise unit. I tried it on the Lilia as well. I remember Lilia, I also ran to the spot where I had a Trenchcoat. Uh, but basically, I'm going to level 9. I want to get to level 9 so I can play ship, 6 Shapeshifter. And I can put in the uh, Briar. I can put these items on Briar. I'm totally down. It's exciting. I'm happy, right? Uh, I can also play towards 5 Eldritch, like I was saying. Uh, get a little bit more tankiness on that guy. Because Elise is doing damage over time, right? She's basically like hitting... She, she's basically like once she ticks down the unit, they're basically taking a bunch of damage. Um, it, it's very strong, right? Uh, this guy... Now, this is scary. Now, if you don't know, uh, mages 
are very fucking strong. Viger is insanely strong, and he has a dual gauntlet on the Viger. I don't even think I win this fight. If you look at this Viger, he's basically like one-shotting my 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 hero augment Elise, right? And it's a Viger too, right? That wasn't very close. That was pretty far away from being close. He's level eight. He's not even close to Viger, but he has double duplicator, right? Uh, that's a problem, right? So I don't see myself. Uh, that I think that's the guy that's gonna win the lobby. I think seven mage. Like if you have a mage emblem and you can make it to level nine to play seven mage. Uh, the frontline mage unit is Vex. She is one of the tankiest, fucking stupid strong tank. Like she has, she is so strong. Uh, like I don't, like it's 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 ridiculous, right? I don't know if she's getting nerfed. I don't know how it's gonna be when the set actually releases. But I expect her to still be somewhat decent. She is like a problem to me. Like she is so ridiculous, right? She is like better than most four cost tanks I've seen in set eleven, right? It is she's dummy strong. And then Viger, Viger scales really well into late game. The way Viger works is that he gains AP if you buy charms. So the longer the game goes on, if you're playing towards Viger and you're rerolling, uh, basically every round you should be buying a charm. Uh, because if you're rerolling, you just basically just have to reroll twice because the charms appear every three every three shops. So you reroll for Viger, you reroll for Vex, and then you also grab uh, a bunch of charms. And then by the end of the game, this guy has like Giga AP, and that one in particular has Radiant Jewel Gauntlet. So he's literally just going to be one shotting everything. So that's going to be a problem for me because, like I said, when I'm playing Elise with the Hero Augment, I'm trying to stall out the opponent, right? I'm trying to do damage over time for as long as possible, right? If you look, whenever my Elise attack is not my Elise attacking, is that, as you can see, they're just ticking away their health, right? And that's, like, the idea behind what, I'm, what my build is, right? So, you know, if somebody's one shot on my board, it's not very good for me. Uh, I would have totally had Syndra 3 by now if I didn't use that charm incorrectly. Be careful when you read the charms. Understand that when it says it changes something. Like, I thought it was going to change something, like, on my board or whatever. I didn't think it was going to change Syndra. I was just like, oh, yeah, let's see. Like, yeah, isn't that good? I just upgrade a unit. I didn't realize, oh, it upgrades. Like, yeah, okay, that's how it works, right? I think it's because my reading comprehension is so bad. There's so many of them that are, like, upgrade a 2 cost to a 3 cost. And then there's some that are, like, upgrade a 2 star to a 3 star. I think, or like something like that, but I think that charm's like giga rare, right? I, I, I forget which one it is, but there's one of them that upgrades the star level. I think it's upgrade a one star to a two star, not a, not a th two star to a three star. That would be really broken because then if you just hit like a thing, but it's like the reading comprehension. So whenever I see upgrade in my head, I'm like, oh, upgrade. I gain a star level. So I thought like, oh, maybe I get like an extra Syndra here. Like this Syndra will be a Syndra too. Like, that's what I was thinking of. I wasn't thinking like this gets upgraded. I, I, like I said, if you read it, it's very obvious what's thing. Anyways, also Jinx. I have a Jinx reroll video on my channel. Jinx reroll is pretty strong. And I'm pretty happy about it. There's this Runan's augment now as well that makes you do extra like bolts. Like the Runan shoots extra bullets. So that's really interesting as well. That's really cool and fun. Uh, here's gain a random uncraftable emblem. This is one that sometimes is a mess. Uh, I'm level nine really early. It's like five three. I'm just fast nine. I'm basically just looking for Briar, and I'm trying to play like a six shapeshifter board. Um, and we're hoping to find Briar. I should be buying Nasus, right? Thank God I bought him. Uh, right now I'm playing five Eldritch, but like I said, I can drop the Cassio for um, for six shapeshifter or whatever. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. No, actually. So I dropped this for Briar. Then I'm five Eldritch. Five shapeshifter. Do I have an extra unit on my board? I'm pretty sure I should fit it in. Oh, maybe I have to be level 10 to fit it in? Oh, that's actually pretty ass then. I thought you can fit in five Eldritch, six shapeshifter. There's two overlap. So you only need to play... What's five plus six? Eleven, nine. You should be able to fit it in, right? If there's two overlapping units. Yeah, but I'm basically just looking for a Briar and I'm not finding it, right? I'm level nine. I'm just rolling for Briar, basically. Who am I playing that's extra? I'm playing somebody extra on my board. I know I'm playing Cassio extra, Cassiopeia, but there should be one more extra. Oh no, it's Cassiopeia. Yeah, yeah. So you remove Cassiopeia, you play a shapeshifter, and then you remove one of the Eldritch units and you play Briar. And then you have six, a uh, five Eldritch, six shapeshifter. That, that's, that's, that's the, okay, I, I got it. 
Uh, here I get Crown Guard. So the reason I took a Crown Guard is because I have a Magnetic Remover. Uh, I don't think this Nasher's Tooth is that great. I can put the Nasher's Tooth on my Syndra, and I can put the Crown Guard on my uh, Elise. And I thought Crown Guard on Elise was already what I wanted to put, right? Uh, it gives defensive stats. It gives a max health shield. I scale my health by a lot because it's Elise and it's a, a Bruiser. Uh, when it splits off with the Trench Coat, they all gain Crown Guard value, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so it's a really good item, right? This is this was a, a meta Silas build. This was like one of the best Silas items that you would basically got a guaranteed top 4 if you had it before, right? Uh, Preserver would have been nice to fit in. It honestly might be drop two shitter Eldritch units and play Preserver. Preserver, what it does is it gives you... um, Yeah, it's probably play Preserver. Oh man. I don't think 5 Eldritch matters as much as uh, Preserver does. Why is my board so shit, by the way? It's because I don't have a Briar. Yeah, it's okay. As my Elise is gonna pop, nice. Oh, they don't gain the extra crown guard, but like they're pretty good. Okay, I think what I'm supposed to do here is I actually just play a preserver. I play uh, Morgana with somebody else. Cause if you play two preserver, you can fit in two preserver really easily. Cause Nico is witchcraft, so then you can drop out a five elder. I think what you're supposed to play is six shapeshifter. Uh, two preserver. Preserver, what it does, it recovers max HP. This is like max HP recovery, right? And then uh, probably like three Eld, right? So probably this is like your better build. Okay, guys, I think I think that's what's gonna be the meta build. Yeah, I just don't see the line. I also don't have five Eldritch in because I still don't have a Briar. If I had a Briar earlier, I'm pretty sure I, I, I kind of clean up shop here. But I think it's so late now that I, I don't have Briar. Because Briar as well, you can scale her up pretty high with um if you get her early. Because the way that Briar works is the lower your HP, the more the more stats she has, like the more damage she does. But you can also per turn feed her three of your HP to boost her HP as well. So ideally, even though Briar is like really good if you're like zero HP, she just gains a bunch of stats, right? So it's pretty good. But if you um if you get her early enough and you can like feed her, it makes it even better. Um, so that's like that's you know that's why I'm trying to like roll as much as I can. And then I, I'm keeping the stupid Cassio in. I really don't think the Syndra Encanter on Syndra matters that much, especially in this case because I don't even have Syndra three. Uh, but yeah, I'm just rolling. I could have easily gone 10, by the way. Like, I could have just sacked and went to 10. But I was hoping that I would at least hit a Briar. And now I'm just stuck on level 9 looking for Briar. Uh, there's many ways I could have capped out my board a lot higher in order to win. But, um, like I said, I just wanted to, like, build the path that I was thinking of. Uh, Warbox is pretty good. Because it gives percentage maximum health as well. So if you already have a lot of health, now Warbox is a little bit more of a useful item. That's something that they changed in, uh, Warbox right now. Uh, this is free gold, so you should always take it, and especially if you're doing that. Uh, I didn't have time to switch out the Nico, but I should have. <sighs> so now I want to put these items on Briar. I was hoping to have at least a Briar 2 by now. I've been rolling a lot on level 9. I'm not hitting shit. Um, but I should be stronger than most of the lobby, I think. Like, I think I'm stronger than this guy now that I have 6 Shapeshifter in, but maybe not. We'll see. This is the Sugarcraft uh, build, so which Sugarcraft? Um, never mind, he's stronger. It bas it's kind of like 8-bit in set 10, but basically it scales infinitely uh, once you hit like the max cake layer. So every cake layer that you hit, up to 7 cake layers, gives you AP and AD. And then after that, you get like cash outs, which is pretty fun and cool. Um, this, yeah. It's honestly Nami. Nami instead of this is probably good. Nami does like a whole board stun. She's kind of crazy. Bro, what am I doing? I'm playing Dragon. Oh, I'm playing Dragon for Anti-Heal. Oh, I think that was my idea. So I wanted to play Smolder because uh, 2 Dragon gives you Anti-Heal right here. And I don't have Anti-Heal built right now, so I'm like, ah, I might as well. Uh, this is the Viger player. He still doesn't have Viger 3, but I'm pretty sure he's going to one-shot everything that I own. We'll see what happens. Yeah, like, like, look at this. Look at this. Look at his DPS. It's a Viger 2. So the thing with the, it's also like everybody together as well. With mages, mages like double cast. So when they cast, they cast again. That's how mages kind of work. 
I don't think I ever beat that guy, even if I had the optimal board. I rolled for this Briar forever, and I just haven't found her. Uh, I didn't even get an upgrade for Briar, which kind of sucks. Uh, I'm still waiting for this Syndra to show up, but that's not happening. Uh, but it's okay. See, so this is what I mean. This is the snack you can feed Briar, and then she gains max HP. I mean, I'm like, I might as well snack once, whatever. Let's see how it goes. Um... Yeah, but I think those I talked about more optimal versions of this board. I think my build and playing the Augment, it was very strong and it was very good up until now. Obviously, now he has Viger 3. So I don't even like, you know, I I was it was a wash when he had Viger 2. Right? I'm pretty sure this this whole augment, like this whole trait is so like incredibly like difficult to deal with. Right? Like I'm six I'm six uh shapeshifter. Like all my units have a lot of HP. I know I don't have, like, the most defensive stats, and also, like, maybe my augments aren't the best augments to take. But, like, this guy doesn't have that many great augments either. He has heroic grab bag. He has, like, zero combat as well. It's not like I'm playing, like, like you know, it's not like, oh, you don't have combat. That's why you're losing. It's like, we both don't have combat. We're both getting our asses beat. You know what I mean? Anyways, this was probably the worst item I could have taken. Bramble against mages. Like, what is that going to do? I finally had Briar too, but, uh, yeah, that doesn't really seem like it's going to help much. Uh, I am lacking damage, right? I'm having a hard time chewing through uh, the Vex. As you can see, the Vex is just... It's a Vex 2, and it's, like, impossible to, like, chew through a damage. Now I have Syndra 3. Maybe I can make something work. I'm trying to position a little bit. Give myself the best chance of trying to win. Right? Maybe at least wraps the back line and kills the Viger. Right? As long as I get that damage uh, on the Viger initially, the poison, I'm kind of down. And then I'm probably going to lose anyways, so, you know, if, if I don't win this fight, I probably lose. So I'm feeding the Briar even though I'm low HP. It's like, whatever. If I lose, I lose. I can't really hit much more than what I hit. I'm like zero gold, right? Uh, Briar dives the back line. She's trying to dis she's distracting the Viger, so maybe this works out. Um, you know, we're, we're tossing around the, the Vex. We shoot through her. We're actually on the back line, but Viger just like one-shots everybody. Right? He, literally just, he literally just kills everybody. So yeah, you know, it is what it is, but I still think the hero augment is strong. I think seven mage is just difficult to hit. It's difficult to get to this kind of a board that's this strong. He has two bastion, three portal, uh, seven mage, right? Really good Viger items. It's six, six. He's been scaling the whole game. It's almost stage seven, right? He's probably, if I anticipating correctly, he's pro if he's playing it properly, he's been buying a charm every single round. Viger gains three AP or something per charm bot. So he's just like giga AP. Right? Um, and 7 Mage, he's just casting a bunch. He has uh, Mage on Diana. Right? He has Bastion in as well. Right? It's a little bit... A little bit too much for me to deal with. Right? And me, I just have like Syndra, which I don't even think is that strong of a unit. And my items aren't even that great. This fight's looking okay, but you know, by the time I'm... I can't even chew through the, the, the Taric. That's also another really strong unit. So, you know, it is what it is. We end up with a second. Now, that being said, I think this was still insightful. I think this was still useful. Hopefully, you can try Elise out. I think with Elise, typically what you want to do is you probably want to reroll Elise, and then you want to reroll uh, Jace with them, with her, right? Because Jace is another one-cost shapeshifter. I'm pretty sure you build her similar to this, that you're playing around six shapeshifter. But I think uh, probably late game, you put in Preserver. Preserver recovers max HP. I think I think you put in this trait. I don't think five Eldritch matters that much. I don't think you play Elise and you play Vertical Eldritch. It's really hard to hit all the three costs of the Eldritch. Uh, Eldritch is very strong, especially if you get like Mascot or something like that. Like some of the traits that really boost Eldritch. But it's a little bit difficult, I think, to play towards like seven Eldritch, for example. Because I think you lose so much tankiness with the Elise that I don't think you compensate for the other units. And I, I tried to do like this Syndra reroll because I was trying to reroll both of these. I don't know if she's the best item holder, the best user. Um, we'll see how it shapes out once units get adjusted. But this is like an idea, right? You're going to reroll Jace, uh, Elise, like Syndra, and then Cassio, right? Like these, this is like a good little like subsection of units you can play and then play like vertical, whatever, uh, shapeshifters. And that might work out. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hopefully, it was a nice video, and hopefully, have a great rest of weekend. I think today is only going to be one video, and then tomorrow, I'll do two videos. See ya.